last day. Well, I'll be very sad about it in many ways, though I haven't been here for the last three years when I retired early. It's going to be a sad day for the, the community. I've spent the majority of my teaching life, actually, in, in this room here where we're speaking now, so it will be sad, but life has to go on. And I guess I know that children will be going to other schools where they'll be well cared for, but it is sad when a, bit, a community has had a school for as long as this and it has to close, but it is inevitable, I'm afraid. Holdale, in the northern fells of Cumbria. A little farming village in the shadow of Skidor, and in that pocket of the Lake District that tourists rarely get to. It's mid-July 1990, haymaking time, tractors moving slowly up and down the steep fields since first light. It's a hot month, hot from early morning to dusk, and not a cloud in the sky. Today is a special day in Oldale, a special day for the village school that's been there for more than 250 years. It's the last day, when the school stops being a school and becomes nothing at all. It's a day to remember. Children's voices, the old log books, past pupils and teachers in this hot July as the rhythms of the land go on. Mark Richardson, he's the youngest, he's five. Gemma Webb, nine. Gareth Richardson, who's Mark's cousin, nine. Jane Pattinson, eleven. Tim Knight, eleven. Richard Mars, ten. And George Bostock, nine. <laughs> There's a bell there and it always rings. And if you ring it any other time of the day, people come rushing up, they think some awful disaster has hit you. <laughs> We were once practicing Christmas pantomime of Dick Whittington. And I was saying to this child, well, you can ring the bell, they say, turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London, you say. And this girl was practicing on the bell in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> An unlikely time for the school bell to ring. So half the village came running up, they thought I was in dire distress. The bell's ringing, the bell's ringing, what's the matter? And I said, oh, we're just practicing for the pantomime. <laughs> Tuesday, the last day that I was here and that we were going to be together, we'd finish off all the things we'd asked for help about. So many things, haven't we? The things that we need help every day. On a morning we all lined up. You didn't run into school like you do now. You lined up outside and you were marched in. Um, the seniors uh, marched into their own desks in the big room. The juniors marched through with them and we all stood in a line in front of the bigger ones, until he had said prayers and sang a hymn. Then we were brought through into here, and our lessons started in here, which was scripture first. I remember that, and then what come after that? Oh, arithmetic. <laughs> um, then play time, and then it's probably composition or something like that. And then dinner time, home for dinner, so far. We had, when we came here, when I came here, we had a um, like an iron cast stove with a little lid at the top where the fuel went in and one at the bottom where you riddle it to get it good and hot surrounded by a guard which was coated, wasn't it Bill, when it was, co when it was wet weather with the clothes of the kiddies that had walked to school for miles around to get dry for them to go home it was all put around the guard to get them, you know, the coats and hats and gloves and scarves and the lot when it was winter time, it was lovely because she would say, come on now, uh, children, we'll bring your, all oh, the desks is near the fire, you know, we're all in a semicircle around there, which was lovely. It might never was cold, because it's been a small place like this. October the 17th, 1929, school logbook. Permission granted from office to have a full day's attendance holiday. As the letter didn't arrive until 11am, the school was given a holiday for the afternoon, on the occasion of the John Peel centenary. The number on the register is steadily decreasing. Last weekend, Isa and Margaret Whitfield left as they are removing to Welton. Today, Sarah and Doris Peel are leaving as they are removing to Ayerby, 33 on roll. April the 10th, 1934, school logbook. Received the new stock of books and needlework. 
Most of the new books are Gibson's Arithmetic, Common Sense English, Land of Many Delights, Land of Happy Hours, Peter Pan and Wendy, Oliver Twist, and Laurel and Gold Poetry Anthology. Punishment Book Stanley Richardson fastened small boys in ash pit and threw ashes in their eyes. Four strokes. So we're going to be sure to a lot of interesting people tonight because it's a hay night. And they, they won't leave the hay field. The weather is... Well, you've got to get your hay in in your country when the weather's right. And the men, the grandfathers and the sons, will be out in the hay field. And the women will be feeding them. So we're going to be short. I know I've already met two families who've said, oh, we're not going to get tonight. People will be bailing or leading in bales. It's very critical hay time in this area. If you go back in the old log books, you find the schoolmasters complaining that children were kept away at harvest when they used to, there's no harvest around here now, but it used to be barley, notes possibly. They were kept away at hay time. They were kept away often for turnip things. They were kept away in the autumn for potato lifting. And if you were paid at, at some period of time, schoolmasters were by attendance, your pay went down when the children weren't here. <laughs> It's quite a close knit village, uh, but it, it's still very much alive. It isn't just a commuter village. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a commuter, so, you know, that's criticism of me in a way. But at the moment, that there aren't too many commuters in the village. There are still people who live and work here, which keeps um, it in proportion. Um, that, you know, the fact that there are working farms in the village, I mean, that helps. The fact that there are people who have been brought up here and lived here all their lives, it all um, gives a healthy balance in the village, I think. Um, for the church sales, the WI sales, the WI meeting, there's the, the Christmas pantomime that the school puts on, the church sales. There's quite a lot that goes on here. There's um, the Christmas party that the village sports committee put on for the children, the young people. There's um, sports day where we have sports on the field opposite and we all come into the, the school for a tea afterwards. And the people from the village provide the food for the tea. Um, without the school, what, you know, what do we use? And the main major packing up day is to be Friday. Um, our staff here and those who are available from Ivy will be uh, coming into school and actually packaging things. The authority arranged to send us cartons and boxes sort of a week or two back, anticipating that, parking, that packing would start while children were here. And similarly, they sent someone to put little yellow labels on items to, while the children were here, but that's been deferred until they've gone, and we'll you know, cope with as much as we can when the children are not here. And it, it is pretty awful to be packing things away. And the sad thing was that there were a couple of children also in school, sort of in attendance yesterday. And, you know, questions were, well, where are those books going? And who's having that? And it, you know, really thrust it home all the time. And there are also things, sadly, that people don't want, that, that nobody claims, nobody wants, you know. Old loved books, you know, and, and a desk that's perhaps too marked to be required. And, Whereas it would have gone on happily being used here. And I've just been telling the archives department about where to send our actual official papers, things like the daily attendance register, um, the admissions register, which records everybody in a list of order in which they come, and an alphabetical list of those names. So if anybody searching could find so-and-so in 19 or 18 dot... <laughs> March the 4th, 1936. School logbook. Again, a heavy shower. The four Borough Lakes, Betty, Sarah, Joseph and Anne, had sheltered on the way and as a result didn't arrive in school in time for their mark. 
attendance still poor, 27 out of 41. There was this monster and he lived with this little boy. Monster was wanted hospital how out, out the invitation for his birthday party. Oh, well, I got my shares of wallopins like because I got into enough trouble, say. I got my shares of uh, I, uh, I think um to teach you Ed was uh, Miss Telford. Oh, she was hard like. Oh she was she, she was hard. But mine I'd even with it all, I, I, I didn't bear any grudges, like, you know, no, no. You yeah, never, never bear grudges. Man, I, I used to bear a few time, like, but <laughs> I know when I left uh, where I was on, say, and we used to knit, even lads used to knit, say, and I was knitting this scarf, say, and so when I was leaving school, she said, you'll finish that scarf. I said, when I finish school, I said, that's your finish. You can't tell me what to do. That, that's it, finished. So I actually took it on with this man, scarf, but uh, she, she used to measure it in the morning when he went to school. So just before she come, I used to stand on it and pull it. <laughs> I used to stand on it and pull it. Well, it was all right for a bit, but it used to seem back in after. <laughs> and she said, Look at all these other lads over there can knit and that. I said, they've all got sisters, I said. I said, my sister is quite a lot younger than me. And uh, I said, I do mind knitting in school, but I'm not knitting at night when I go home. And I wouldn't either. So I used to get into bother for that, say. When you went to a class in the class, can he hear the pencil? Yes, he can. I mean, it's much nicer to look at when you kept going across and don't do the up and down as well. Why do you like it when you go like it with your pencil it's and it makes it amazing? Yeah. Well, because you're not holding, not when he's doing it like that, he's not holding the pencil so tight and he's holding it differently. Because that's, that's that way when you... When, when, he, when he holds it that way, it's the point that goes onto the pages and it makes a hard line. When he does it that way, it's the the flatter side of it that makes it softer. Yeah. That's what, that, and it's, it's like something that. like Mark's doing for the skylight. See how, how much nicer it looks there where he's done it that way than when he did it with the point of the pencil. Yeah, just very sad that this is closing and uh, I'm sure we're all fairly dreadfully tonight. It hasn't hit us yet. Um, I know when we were at the WI on um, last meeting and um, we were saying about oh well next month when we come in sep um, in September we'll have to all bring a chair because there'll be nothing in for us to sit on or anything you know and and oh dear it just seemed to hit you then you know we've talked about his school closure but until it's actually closed we you don't realize it you know why, why do you think it's that? Not a very energetic type of exercise, is it? Well, yes. Because you're walking quite slowly. Yes. What are your results now, then? What's this? Yeah, six to walking. Yeah. That was 22. I think it will be sad. And the thing that struck me when I first came to the school here was the family feeling. I'd always worked and lived in, in towns and taught in big schools. And I walked in here and the children were just like a family and, and I wish my children had been able to come to school like this. Because I, I think it's ideal and yes, I'll be sad and I think it is, I hope um, that there will still be a centre somewhere because I think the community spirit is very strong and I think it should, it should carry on somehow. With it. And I think it's a pity um, that children who go to school in their own village relate to that village and it, it gives them a sort of ability and the very thing that in big towns they're trying to create in um, communities and to get this community spirit we've got it here on the plate and it would be pretty to lose it and that was what impressed me when I came here 
Well, one of the things I think I should always remember, I think it was the first Christmas I was here and we walked one and a half miles up this road to go and choose our Christmas tree. A, a local person said we could have one for the school. And it was a beautiful, sunny, frosty day. It was a really lovely day for a walk. And we chose it. And it wasn't until we cut it down, we really, realised how big it was. And you know how tall the building is inside. It nearly touched the ceiling. <laughs> but we had to get a Land Rover to come and pick it up because there was no way we could get it back. <laughs> it was a beautiful tree. <laughs> Here's Tim and George and Jane. Now, for this morning, you can either you can either go on, if you want another picture, you can go on and do something else like that, or you can go on and do what I suggest and find some dipping and skipping and counting and bones to put into your book. Which you want to do? No. If you want to have another picture to do a poem from, you can. I've got um, to finish my... Yes, I know. It's getting a bit out of hand, yours, I think. Anyway, you can choose one, Jane. I think I know what you mean. George, do you want to do another poem and then talk a couple of things out? Right, well, you, when Jane's chosen her card, you can do one. Tim, what's that, you? March 16, 1921. School logbooks. This morning was very wild and stormy. Mary Young and Joseph Ross were the only two children from a distance. Their stockings were wet, so I had them dried at the fire during scripture lesson. Received a telegram from SMO that school is closed until 23rd on account of whooping cough. Received parcel of new readers from storerooms. 18 adventures in the bush, 18 geography readers, the empire. Nine stories, old and new. Reverend Bell visited school. I drew his attention to the cupboard, which through shrinkage of wood I am unable to lock. <coughs> The phone went one day and uh, I came back in the phone through there at the porch and I said, oh, that was Sister Aquinas at the Catholic school that we and she wants us to go and play a football match, you say, on one Wednesday afternoon, I think it was. And uh, I said, that'll be good, we're going with Ivy, we'll make it 11 up with them. And she goes, can't go Wednesday afternoon. And I said, why can't we go Wednesday afternoon? There's no reason why we shouldn't. And he said, we also have sex on Wednesdays. <laughs> Oh my God, there was nobody outside the school door. And we were watching the merry-go-round BBC sex program. And they happened to be on whenever this time was we were going anyway to the football match. It was sex afternoon. March 13, 1924. School logbook. My voice has almost completely gone. My throat is awfully swollen. However, trying to carry on as best I can. Nine boys spent the afternoon helping a farmer to capture a runaway calf and thereby lost their mark. Amos Hayton had a full week off, helping to repair damage to buyer done by storm. Postal order, value four and sixpence, sent to Secretary of Empire Day Association. We were just having on the end of term clearing up. <laughs> what often happens at the end of term, children put on a little concert. Two or three of them are quite keen on dancing, so they do their current dances and... George will probably play the piano and Gareth will play his keyboard. <laughs> and we just have, might take half an hour now, so. And then we have to tie, it's just the ordinary end of term tidying up. I don't want to start packing all the things that while the children are there. I wouldn't like them to go away with that image of a bare school. I think it would be terrible. I'd have to come back in on Friday and start. I mean, I can remember when we had a video exhibition in here in 1970 for the Centenary of the Education Act. Then we had another big celebration in here when the school was 250 years old. And for three or four days, this whole place was full of stuff. All these photos of uh, all sorts of artifacts and clothing and books. And everybody came in every night. And the real old chaps of the village, all those who were 65, 70 plus, they spent their whole time looking at these photos and looking at the punishment book which is an absolute kick. I'd carefully put it out with pieces of string across where nobody got insulted about what they'd done. They immediately took all the bits of string off and said, Hey, now, let me see now. When was it I got caned for what I did to Mary Ann? And over the pages would go. <laughs> they were very proud to be the punishment book. <laughs> Six strokes of the cane for bothering the girl. Mind boggle. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
there anybody who hasn't had letters from from their particular friend that they wrote to you? Haven't have you, Matthew? But you've had a letter from someone else, yeah. haven't you? I haven't had it. Didn't you? Had a letter from me. So you haven't had a letter at all. Yeah. Matthew, no letters, right? Jane, you have heard from. Yeah, and have heard from Ah, but you've had you've had letters back. What about Michelle? So you haven't had No, no, there's George, Martin, John, Robin, David, Billy, Colin, Mary, Barbara, Edith, Lucy, Margaret, Susan. Thanks, <laughs> so that boy there, he's got two children in this room at the moment. His two younger daughters are sitting over there, and he's got an older one that's comprehensive. He's married, he's a, a master mason, he's a very clever builder and mason. He's one of the trowels and things at the pit that he trains. He's a surveyor, quantity surveyor. He's a farmer, he's a farmer. He does things with TV, he's a farmer, he's a farmer. She's a pharmacist. What will that you see? For what will be that you see? One or two are quite upset because of the school actually closing. I don't think it's so much the fact of going on to another school because they know the children in the schools anyway. Two of them will be moving on to secondary. But just the fact that the school won't be there and I suppose it is like a family. <laughs> it's a, a very special type of environment really. Protected in a way, but it, although we could argue it's overprotective, but at the same time, I think if in that situation you can give children the confidence to take part in, in absolutely everything, because there's so few of them, it doesn't matter what we're doing, they have a go and they join in. And I think at the end of the day, that gives them confidence to try new things when they, when they leave, when they to go on to secondary education. That one's got a crown and that one hasn't. She has. I think she has, but it's a different sort of crown, isn't it? Is it classical? Mm hmm, you have a look. Oh, yeah. Whose head's on there? Mm. Our queen. Our queen. Do you know what her name is? Queen who is it? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, that's right. And that side is called the head side of the coin. Do you know what the other side is called? Have you heard the expression head and tail? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a game out about it. You That's shake right. it and then you put it mm -hmm. face. If you want to say you wanted tails and I wanted heads, I'll put it and say if I got heads and you got tails. July the 15th, 1942. School logbook. Registration began this morning. Uldale, 31 out of 31. Newcastle, 16 out of 17. South Shields, 5 out of 5. Medical inspection commenced at 9.20 and continued to 11.15 when Dr. Simpson gave first inoculations against diphtheria. Mr. Lawrence, evacuated from Newcastle, has been recalled and returns there today. Dave, and with a good food party. Ah, with a good food party. Uh, when there were they like, because there was plenty of us, uh, and, you know, so, we were always playing bus baby when the evacuees was there like, because we, we had a good <laughs> one, you know, we had a good one. And I remember when the, when the first come, they'd never seen the farms and cows, and uh, I know in village here, they ran around and let out everybody's uh, young stock out, they, they thought they, they shouldn't be inside, say, and, Everything was playing out everywhere, you know, they just didn't understand, like, you know. It's amazing 
I'll tell you some of the new artists you tell. These two lads, there was three I used to meet on with, and there was these two lads, I learned to get tickled through, you know, to the back. Uh, so, he would be done for it today, like, but <laughs> we done it then. I, I used to go out in the yard, well, River Ellen was down there, and they were at Old Mill, and uh, they, they, they were fascinated because I could catch them with my hands, uh, you know, and would assure them. Well, it finished, there was, there was a bit as good at it as I was, really. Well, in my first instance, I was staying with friends at Colbeck, and um, common schools had gone back. I was teaching in Birmingham, and my friend at Colbeck came home with a vacancy list for the area, and she said, oh, old old schools, head chips up, why didn't you apply? So we phoned up somebody who had a car, came and brought us over here, all appeared to be street, streets full about half a state at night. We came to that window over there and we thought we'd have a look in. They're quite a bit higher outside than they are in. So we leapt up and down and to our amazement this room was full of women. <laughs> it was Women's Institute night. But whereas today you'd know that because the road outside was full of motor cars, and then hardly anybody, any women drove, so they'd all walk to the institute meeting. So we were all leaping up and down, and there was a speech of event, and the backs of the women were to us at that window. We're going home, we're going home, we're going home to that old home. It's time to go, it's time to go, because the day is nearly done. And now we are. very sad occasion in a way because they've had a school since 1726 and that's a very long while and most villages around here didn't have a school in 1726 and the children walked long distances to come here for education and you know not to have a school is quite incredible the way I don't think it's a really dawn on people because it's not here in September suddenly the, there's no more school as such the building will be here but the bell isn't going to go in the morning to call, call them in from the playground or playtime or after dinner until there are no children coming up and down every morning in September and the bell isn't going and the kids aren't running down and there's no Christmas concert to come to and the children aren't in church at harvest time or the big festival for children from school nearly always came down to the church school and they sang and they said their poems, they read their stories, they acted out things that's going to vanish. And I think people, you know, the, the long-term implication of it probably won't dawn. It's only when harvest time comes and suddenly there are no children's pictures around the church. They always put their paintings down and we always stuck them up around the church. Things like that. There are no children singing about the berries and the fruits and the corn. Then suddenly they'll realise, you know, again with no school. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> Can't do much else. The last day is almost over. The tractors make their way up and down the steep fields in the evening light. They've had the service of Thanksgiving, the church crowded with people as the children sang their special songs and the bishop spoke above the noise of the tractors outside. And now, back in the school, after the tea and buns and the talking and the stories and the speeches, there's the presentation of the picture of the last children, George, Mark, Sarah, Gemma, Gareth, Jane, Tim, Richard and Matthew. To Gail Downs, the last head teacher on the last day. Well, that one certainly takes time to say. Last Day was compiled and presented by Ian McMillan and Martin Wiley and produced in Sheffield by Dave Sheesby.